So I'm saying here that cooked greens, beans, and nuts and seeds enhance dietary protein and are especially important as we age. Now we're getting back to this idea of fat now and that we need fat to absorb the high nutrients, the phytochemicals, the carotenoids that are in food, that are in natural plant foods. In other words, we get more anti-cancer benefits from food when we consume some fat with that meal. Here's, for example, a study that showed that with no fat, there was almost no absorption of carotenoids, almost zero. But with about six grams of fat, they got in the middle there, they got some absorption. But 20 grams of fat, you know, which were more than 20, got the most absorption. But, it, but I'm suggesting that somewhere between 10 and 20 grams of fat per meal maximizes absorption and it correlates with the most of the studies on nuts and seed intake and how much fat and how much nuts and seeds people should consume to maximize absorption of nutrients, which is related to maximum lifespan and maximum protection against cardiovascular death and cancer death. So this correlates, I'm suggesting, to about a half an ounce to an ounce of nuts with each meal based on your caloric needs. So let's review some, let's keep continuing the same subject. Because the first thing I'm saying is that we knew back from 1918, right? We knew from many years ago that um, the Physician's Health Study, that eating nuts and seeds regularly or daily, or eating an ounce every day, decreased risk of cardiovascular death, generally in most studies by 40%, but it reduced risk of sudden cardiac death due to a cardiac arrhythmia by 60%. So all heart attacks aren't caused by clots or blockages. Some are caused by irregular heartbeats going into a ventricular tachycardia, which can cause, a, can cause death. And we know that diets too low in fat can increase the irritability of the heart to go into an abnormal arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation and even increase the risk of sudden cardiac death. We know this because we have more, invest, more studies today that show that ALA or alpha linolenic acid, the omega-3 fatty acids found in walnuts and flax seeds and chia seeds and hemp seeds have shown to reduce the risk of sudden cardiac death and more studies showing that they reduce the risk of atrial fibrillation. And we can understand the biology and science behind it, why that occurs. So here's what I'm saying, that you can read it on the slide that these fats alter ion channel transport activity that influences arrhythmogenesis. In other words, it protects the heart against going into irregular heartbeats. So, and of course, we're saying that um, eating nuts reduces risk of atrial fibrillation in a recent large prospective study of Swedish adults. Okay. So we're saying that looking at about, I looked at about 50 studies here, and I'm going to show some of those studies right now, that nuts and seeds absorb cholesterol into the gut and suck out oxidized LDL. Let me say that one more time. That the fat in nuts and seeds is bound to fibers like sterols and stanols. And as we digest the fat from nuts and seeds, these sterols and stenols are like fat magnets and suck fat out of the bloodstream into the digestive tract and carry the fat out into the stool. So when you eat nuts and seeds, it produces more stool fat. But the stool fat isn't all from the nuts and seeds. The stool fat is coming from fat in the bloodstream. And it actually has a preference to suck out oxidized LDL, the most dangerous actor that causes heart disease. Restore, helping, so showing the studies showing that vascular elasticity and the irritability of tissues is decreased when you add some of these healthy foods in your diet. So there's numerous studies, just mentioning four or five of them here, that show both a dramatic reduction in all-cause mortality and a dramatic effect on increased lifespan from the inclusion of nuts and seeds, or you can say it the other way around, the shortening of lifespan and the increase in cardiovascular death from the exclusion of nuts and seeds. And we're saying this because some people are telling you to exclude them without having the science to support that. Because you can't just look at one study or a short-term study. You have to look at many studies and a study has more credence if it follows people to the hard endpoint of their death and you see exactly how long that person lived and what they died of. That gives studies the most credence. So here's looking at a meta-analysis of all those studies, those high credence studies, looking at more than 44,000 deaths show about a 40% decrease in cardiovascular mortality and almost a 30% decrease in overall all-cause mortality, including cancer mortality. And this perfectly corroborates the finding of the Adventist Health Study 2, which found the same thing with a smaller number of people. Now, what I'm saying here, the Adventist Health Study 2 
is such an important study in the history of nutritional science because the Adventists studied are people who don't generally smoke, drink, they exercise regularly, they're eating healthier and living healthier than the conventional American. So you don't have many co-founding co-factors. And because they're eating a lot of plant-based diets, we see people are already not eating like a lot of butter and cheese and bacon and using nuts and seeds in place of that, but people are already eating relatively healthfully that are either excluding or including nuts and seeds. And we can look at that level of animal protein in smaller levels of like including it once a week or two times a week or in small amounts and see if there's much of a difference between zero and the small amount. So the Adventist Health Study too has tremendous um, power and um, an ability to, to give us insight, you know? And so what we found here is in the Adventist Health Study too, is that even among vegans, even among healthy, healthiest eaters, the exclusion of nuts and seeds was a significant risk factor for a shorter life. Meaning that the longest lived Seventh-day Adventists were not vegans, they were vegans who ate nuts and seeds. And even the, the, even the flexitarian vegans who ate some animal products lived longer than the vegans who didn't eat nuts and seeds. So here's in the overall the Seventh-day Adventist studies, the diets that excluded nuts and the diets that included nuts had a major difference in lifespan if we look at the data and, and you know, you know, file it down to what exactly, how many years were associated with longer life. And if I break down the quintiles from the lowest quintile of consumption to the highest quintile, and the quintile means fifth, you know, five different groups. And the percent of total protein from the highest quintile, meaning about 10% of their calories of their protein came from nuts and seeds versus about 1% in the lowest quintile. So 10 times more protein from nuts and seeds, which adds good quality protein to the diet. And looking at the middle quintile, they were eating about a half an ounce of nuts and seeds, a first quintile, you know, a very small amount. But the, but the ones that showed the most favorable lifespan were people were eating about, you know, based on the caloric consumption, between, you know, like one and a half ounces or one and a quarter ounces of nuts. They were eating more than an ounce of seeds of nuts a day. So looking at that, I'm just going to, oh, no, I don't have, I, I think I must remove that. Okay, so looking at that, we're, I'm, I'm suggesting here that if we're going to look at the quintile that gets the most benefit, we're going to be looking at um, eating about a half an ounce of nuts with each meal. And if you're, look, if you're overweight looking to lose weight, you don't cut the nuts out. You don't increase your risk of cardiovascular. You cut other foods out. In other words, if you need 1,300 calories a day or 1,500 calories a day, whatever the caloric need, your caloric needs are, you, could, you, don't have to, you don't add nuts to add more calories if you're trying to lose weight. You take out some other foods and you let the nuts be replacement calories. And what do you think the science shows? When, cal when diets are held isocaloric, the same caloric level, and you take out some carbohydrate and put in more nuts and seeds, what do you think you show there? You show more weight loss, more diabetic control, more heart, more heart disease reversal and lengthening of lifespan and longer lifespan to lower cancer rates. So the effects are incredibly beneficially dramatic when you control your calories, the level that's perfect for you, but the method of control is not taking all the fat out. The method is control is including the fat, having some balance in your diet, right? You want balance. We don't want to have extreme diets. You don't want to say like, oh, I'm the diabetic. I'm going to control my sugar by looking on a keto diet, or I'm going to control my sugar by taking all the fat out of my diet. No, you want to control your sugar by eating the right foods and by not overeating. You don't want to be on a keto diet so you can overeat and still have your sugar be all controlled. You don't want to be, you know, so in other words, we're not looking for a gimmick here. We're trying to look for sensibility and balance to make us live longer. So don't forget, in the highest quintile of the Seventh-day Adventist study, which is corroborated by more than, a, more than 20 different studies looking at the same issue, it shows not just a 10% increase in lifespan or lower risk of cardiovascular death, but a 40%. That's huge. And let me be clear, there's no conflict. Because some people make the ridiculous concept, oh yeah, well, the nuts and seeds are good for you, but not if you have heart disease. If you have heart disease, better to take them out. That's ridiculous. There's no data to support that ridiculous contention. It's like saying, you know, smoking cigarettes are good for us until we get lung cancer, then it's better for us to stop. It's not one diet. It's, in other words, salt is, is all good to remove once you have heart disease. No, if salt is good to remove when you have heart disease, you should remove it before you had heart disease. You didn't get heart disease. 
The same diet that prevents the disease is best for the person who has the disease. It's not a different diet when you have the disease. If it's going to prevent, if, it's going to, if lowering fat that low is going to increase risk of cardiovascular death and increase the irritability of the heart to go into an abnormal arrhythmia, then it's not the most favorable diet to remove all the nuts and seeds from a diet when a person has heart disease. Okay, here's a study I published in the American, in the International Journal of Disease Prevention. Excuse me a second. And the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention, 2020, showed nuts and seeds for heart disease prevention. And that should say nuts and seeds for heart disease prevention and reversal. Because I reviewed all the data, including more than 50 references documenting nuts, the use of nuts and seeds prevents heart attacks and cardiac arrhythmias. And I'm putting that there so you can look at that and you can review the studies and read the article and make sure you understand the science that supports the claims I'm making here. And then a study I published earlier was um, improved cardiovascular parameters with a nutrient-dense plant-rich diet style that included nuts and seeds, showing that about 450 people's blood pressure went back to normal. We dropped their blood pressure by then 26 points within, a, within some period of months, right? While their blood pressure medications were taken away. I know of no other study that with that large number of people that showed such effective blood pressure lowering, but I used illustrative cases of many of my patient and uh, histories where people with very advanced heart disease, people who were in, with heart failure in the hospital, with cardiomyopathies, with, with severe blockages, with who either refused cardiac um, interventions, or, but who got well and made complete recoveries. So my career and my taking care of many, many hundreds of people with heart disease too, with very advanced heart disease, showed a spectacular amount of people reversing their heart disease without the need to restrict diets to pull all the fat out.